the most amazing time is to be in Christ. If you're not in Christ, your life is in crisis. And that is why as an individual, every day of your life should be filled with God. Because when you have God, you have hope. And this brings me to introducing one of the best foundations you can ever imagine on planet Earth. That is, I hope in Christ. I want to thank um, Apostle Jacob Pujuto of Dwara for the grace upon his life because God actually gave him that mandate and decided to follow that mandate. A lot of persons are given mandate, but they just overlook it. But God puts that mandate in him and is pursuing it. And I see God helping each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is I hope in Christ? What are they into? It's a foundation where, it's not a church. I will list people, it's not a church. It's a foundation whereby we win souls for Christ. If you look at the world today, the world is filled with so many things. Just of recent read in the news, our ages of 17, 19, 20 killed a girl. Why? Because of what? Money. Money ritual. Why? Because foundation is faulty. What the Bible said, the Bible said if the foundation is faulty, what will the righteous do? So we need to start building from the foundation. If you want to cut the tree, you don't cut the tree from the branch. You cut the tree from the root. And that is what we're doing in I hope in Christ. Now, what is the mandate? And one person. And I bring about ten persons. Now, just imagine those ten persons, they, 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 they replicate themselves by bringing ten persons. Gradually, 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 we win the whole world to Christ. And that is the mandate of I hope in Christ. That is what the mandate of I hope in Christ. So, at all times, let's pursue that mandate of winning souls for God. And if you see in the Bible, I was just Christ able to win souls for Christ. He gathered the multitude, he fed, he fed the multitude, and that's one of the major, major things we do in I hope in Christ. And I see God perfecting what we have in mind to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let's have this in mind. Me, as a person, I bring 10 persons to Christ. Those 10 persons bring their own 10 persons to Christ. Now, that is my first generation. We have seven generations here now. My first generation is bringing 10 persons to Christ, which is me. And the second generation is bringing, representing 10 persons again to Christ. Before you know, we have one millions for Christ. Now we have four agendas. And what is our agenda? I know a lot of persons will ask, okay, what is our agenda for I hope in Christ? The major thing we need to understand is that there are five things involved here. Number one, winning souls for Christ. We need to depopulate the kingdom of hell. I don't know if you understand. We need to do what? Depopulate the kingdom of hell. If you, if, if you notice around the world, you look as if the devil is winning. Yeah. But we as Christians, we have that mandate to win souls for Christ. If you feel, my pastor will say something, that if you feel you cannot go out to win souls, why not pray for those souls? Why not pray for those souls? And according to our mandate, we have 10 a.m., we have 10 p.m. If you cannot go out to win souls, 10 a.m., 10 p.m., pick out anything that's convenient for you and start praying for that soul. Start praying for that soul. And your lifestyle also has to show you are winning souls for Christ. Because you don't expect me to be into prostitution. You don't expect me to be an arm robber. And I will go to win souls for Christ. It's not possible. They will not listen to me. I have to live a godly life. You have to live a godly life before you can win souls for Christ. That is number one mandate. And what is our second mandate? Yeah. Make disciples. Now I have one souls. Let's, one thing I love doing is that I love pointing my views, my views to biblical points. What did Jesus Christ do? He won souls for Christ. After winning the souls and making sure they were granted in the kingdom, the next thing he did was what? He made disciples out of them. He did what? He made disciples out of them. So the first now of one souls for Christ, the next thing we need to think about is making them disciples. Who are disciples of Christ? Followers. Of Christ, that makes you what a disciple of Christ. How did the name come about, Christians? And what or what is the meaning of the name Christian? Christ like, Christ like, and so those two words coming together makes us what Christians. But unfortunately, in the world, a lot of persons claim to be Christians, but they are not Christians, and it's so bad. Even they even put it in form religion. What religion? Christian is not a religion. Christianity is the way of life, is a way of Christ like in us. So, after winning souls, the next is to making those souls disciples for Christ. And what is the next mandate? Retaining and sustaining. Retaining and do what? Sustaining. Find I have won souls for Christ. 
They are now disciples for Christ. What next? You need to follow up and retain them and sustain them. Because if you don't retain them and sustain them in Christ, the devil will retain them and sustain them for himself. So you can see we have a lot of work to do. But come to think of it, it's not too much work. It's not too much thing we're asking here. I always tell people, it's easier to serve God than to serve the devil. Do you know why? Because if you're serving the devil, he will give you conditions. But God will never give you conditions. He allows you to have your free will. So at all times, let's, let's, let's hope in Christ. Let's put our trust, let's put our hope in Christ. And I see God helping us doing all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, what is the fourth point? Eliminating poverty. Eliminating what? Poverty. Poverty can actually be eliminated. How can poverty be eliminated? If everybody that God has blessed come together, bring whatsoever they have, before you know, gradually we're eliminating poverty. And that is what the church is supposed to be after. You can remember in the New Testament and analyze and say, what did they do? They, they made up, they, they, they came together and they agreed we were going to bring things for God. They brought it, but the grief came into them and they decided not to bring everything and what happened to them. But this time around, anything the Lord lays in your heart, bring it. By the time you bring your little cotton, you saw that person brings his little cotton, before you know, the world is a merry place for everyone to be. And by so doing, we've won souls for Christ. If you can eliminate poverty, I bet you the whole world will be for Christ. And what is the final work? Or what is our final mandate? To restore hope to the needy among us and outside the church. The church is not only the place you restore hope. A lot of persons are hopeless outside. A lot of persons are stagnated. A lot of persons are depressed. So now we're bringing hope to the hopeless. Because God has given us that grace to bring hope to the hopeless. And by embarking on those five mandates, I see God helping us to prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Action. Once again, this is Demetoko Yilami. And by the special grace of God, I'm a minister, both in, in song and in the word. And uh, I want to appreciate God for giving me this opportunity to be part of this great team, to be part of this movement of I Hope in Christ. And I want to say a big out, a big shout out to all our members all over the world, in the UK, America, Indian, Asia, anywhere around you can hear me. I'm just I'm greeting you in the mighty name of Jesus. I see God helping you. And it's also a privilege to be among the best team in I Hope in Christ, which is BP Health team. May God continue to strengthen us to do his work at all time in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.